It's the last viable population in the ACT region for a fish that's nationally endangered. And so we have a major responsibility, uh, the Canberra community and ACTU and the government, to ensure that the fish survives. We're now engaged in a range of research projects related to the enlargement of the Cotter Dam that's now underway. We put a very, very high premium on the work that we're doing to, to address the environmental issues produced by the water security projects. While Canberra keenly anticipates the enlarged Cotter Dam, there is a host of other associated projects underway, including environmental work that's also vital to the big picture of Canberra's future water security. Amongst these is the Endangered Fish Species Management Program. Academics and students from the Australian National University and the University of Canberra are working with ACTU and its Bulk Water Alliance partners to ensure the survival of species like the Macquarie Perch, as well as monitoring threats from exotic species, predators and disease. As part of the research into the enlargement of the Cotter Dam, it was realised that the filling of the reservoir would take away much of the Macquarie Perch's habitat. So trials are underway with three different types of man-made structures or artificial reefs to see if the Macquarie perch like them initially and then if they actually use them. The hope is that one or more of these reef designs will create suitable habitat as the new dam fills. We've got five uh, video underwater video cameras set up. So the aim is to try and capture Macquarie perch using our reefs, uh, size classes of the Macquarie perch any behavioural interactions, any predator-prey interactions between other species. While Ryan is looking after the underwater video operations, Jason is monitoring Macquarie perch that are fitted with individual radio tracking devices. Each fish has a, an individual transmitter which is on a unique frequency, so we, we set up our gear so that we can find every individual fish and follow them through time so that we can work out what they're doing in this reservoir. Yep, no worries. It's all research, so it's all orientated towards very specific questions. Can we provide habitat for the fish? Where are they going to live? How will they use that habitat? You know, 25 years ago, Macquarie perch weren't even a threatened species then, so we used to catch them and they were a nice fish and interesting to study and there wasn't a lot of priority on them. And, and then they declined, you know, dramatically in uh, the mid-1980s across a lot of their range. It is one of the very, very principal objectives to ensure the Macquarie perch survive uh, and, and, and really flourish in this habitat of the new Cotter Dam. Canberra Uni PhD student Katie Ryan's focus is also on the Macquarie perch. But today she's looking for another native species, the cormorant. So what I do is just move along the edge of the reservoir, uh, look through the spotting scope, look for any cormorants that are on the dam, write down how many cormorants we've got, uh, where they are and what they're doing. You know, it's a good indicator if we end up with a whole lot of, uh, of our radio tags in a certain spot, we can, we can tell if that's a spot where the cormorants are hanging out and if those radio tags might have ended up there because uh, the fish have been eaten by cormorants. So that's what we're worried about is that when the dam's expanded and all this habitat isn't available, uh, that, that the, the Macquarie perch are just going to get nailed by, uh, by cormorants, they're just going to get eaten. Over at the ANU, Dr Chris Fulton is overseeing the work of honour students who are looking at the swim performance of native and exotic fish. Fish swim. Uh, it seems obvious, but it's actually uh, very tricky to measure swim performance in fish because it's a bit like you and I walking around versus running around. You know, we make various decisions about what speed we'll get around uh, our environment in, and fish do the same thing. So Macquarie perch are, are a migrating species. They actually like to migrate upstream, particularly when they're spawning. And so we need to know about whether they can actually swim upstream and if there's any barriers in their way. Now when I say barriers, there's obvious barriers, like not enough water, or a brick wall, uh, or there could be barriers where there's way too much flow. And if that's the case, then we need to know about it and we need to put things in place to make it slower so they can actually get through things that we call fishways, generally. 
how the fish are able to get through these is very important because if they aren't able to successfully complete their migrations then it's possibly quite detrimental for the species, they might die out. And in fact this has been documented in Gugong Dam following the construction of Gugong. Since we've started to regulate the rivers and we've started to modify how the flows go through those rivers, we need now to be very careful about the flows and the flow speeds. I guess it's kind of a trade-off whether you want the native fish to pass or you want to block off the exotic species. And the problem is a lot of the exotic species, especially trout, are like some of the world's best freshwater swimmers. It's been a quiet day for cormorants. Katie is now preparing to track the movements of individual Macquarie perch that are carrying radio tags. It, it gives you a beeping sound, so you're looking for uh, the loudest beep and you can get quite specific as to where your fish is. They love this emergent vegetation, which we already assumed they did from previous studies. We kind of had an idea of that. But what we didn't know before was that they love the woody debris as well. Since the 2003 bushfires, that kind of put a whole lot of woody debris in Cotter Dam. Below the dam wall on the Cotter River, the Stars Brothers are undertaking water velocity testing at a fishway. The fishway is a uh, man-made uh, structure designed to assist fish in overcoming an obstacle. The fishway is designed to create hydraulic conditions that a fish can swim through, so it creates a, get a gradual ramp that the fish need to swim up rather than a single step, which was here before. Fine measurements of the river flow require modern technology. We use this uh, vernier flow sensor and the propeller on the end of it and stick that down in the water and it gives us a reading of the velocity and so we measure that at various points throughout the fishway and so we can work out to a very fine scale whether the fish can pass or not. It's kind of ironic that uh, the Cotter Dam that exists now is in fact part of the reason for the survival of the fish where it is. The fish management program around the Cotter contains about eight or nine projects and some of them are quite short term and have already been completed and some of them are really long term and you may not know for 10 or 15 years whether they've been successful. Moving the dam back to a working dam is a great challenge because suddenly the reeds won't be there and therefore how are we going to preserve this very important population of fish and that's where we've invested a lot of money and a lot of expertise and pulled in the best people to tell us how do we help these fish survive.